So this is a tutorial for the GF Eclipse plugin. You can see that we have Eclipse open here. We have the GF perspective open. And we also have our project open here with all our GF source files in it. So we have one file open here. And also in this view here, we can have an outline of the current file. If you notice that this is uh, GF specific, so it's uh, d telling us everything that's declared essentially in our, uh, in our source code file, or we can jump to any definition. Um, in um, other files, it will also give the types here of the function that are uh, defined. So that's quite helpful uh, when if you if you want to navigate your source file quickly without scrolling through the code. As such, we see that we have obviously syntax highlighting, but more than that, we also have um, detection of syntax errors. So anything which is ungrammatical in this case will give us an error, and uh, so we can be able to correct that before we ever even try and compile any of our code. We have a useful feature called auto formatting. So if your source code files uses some uh, irregular type of formatting, in this case, you can use the um, Eclipse format function, which will automatically adjust the indentation and the line breaks and that sort of thing for us. So here we have a lot of references to external functions. If I hover over them, we can actually see there's some inline documentation for those, in this case, giving us all uh, different overloaded forms of the function. And a good um, byproduct of this is we have auto completion so if I hit the control space key we can we get a list of suggestions of anything that could be continued from here and also if obviously here I enter some function a which is not defined and we're given a warning and, and be, we're being told that this uh, function is not anywhere in the module hierarchy so not visible to this file so that's another way in which we can detect errors very quickly as we're writing our code before it's ever, even ever compiled so another um, product of this is that we can actually jump to the de to the point at which a particular ident identifier is defined. So in this case, I can right click and go to open declaration, and this will take us to the paradigms Engl English file. Um, we're taken directly to the point at the file in which the function is declared, but also notice that this paradigms English file isn't in our project, but it's actually an external file, so somewhere in the resource grammar library. Another way of navigating those files is through this external view over here, where we have a list of every, of every external module which is essentially imported into our projects. So that's another way which we can navigate in, in these external files. So now as an example, we want to add a new language. We want to add Swedish. And since we already have a functor set up, we just want to essentially copy this file and change the strings to match the Swedish and using the uh, smart paradigms from the resource grammar library. So we have a wizard for that. So I can um, right click on the English lexicon file. And here is to clone for new language, and we want to call it Swedish and replace the strings with empty ones. Okay, so it's created a new file for us, Lexfood Swedish, and also note that the imports here have also been updated accordingly. Um, so now I would want to just enter the correct strings in this case. I have those saved on the clipboard, so there they are. And in each case, we're using the simplest form of the uh, make noun or make adjective. Um, smart paradigm. So we want to find out if this is actually correct. So one way we can do this is by uh, ha running a tree bank test. I have a tree bank file here, which is a list of uh, five abstract syntax trees which we want to linearize and check against the gold standard to see if our grammar is doing uh, what we want it to do. So the first step is that we need to create this gold standard file and I can do that by this way. So this has created a linearization of all the trees. Now we need to manually check each of these and correct uh, where they are incorrect so that we our gold standards is actually guaranteed to be 100% correct. And we notice that, for example, this word V na na is incorrect in Swedish. It should be V na na. So we'll save that. And now that we have um, the both the tree bank file and the gold standard file, we can compare them against each other. So we go to run configurations, we have test Swedish already set up here. And here we have uh, just make sure that the options are set correctly. So we want to run a tree bank and compare it against this gold file. So that's fine. So now we can go here and do run tree bank. And we're given a list of results of how our grammar is performing compared against the tree bank. So in this case, linearis linearization. And here actually we're given an error showing that this uh, particular word VNNR should actually be VNNR. So now in this case, we can go directly to our grammar to, to fix this. So in this case, 
it appears that we're using this um, single string smart version of the smart paradigm but that might be incorrect so if I look at the documentation here we can actually see all the different forms of this overloaded definition and we could say okay in this case we want to use this uh, form with four different strings so we can just enter each of those here and this is going to be a sort of worst case function there we actually are entering Wiener now explicitly so we can save that file and now if I just go here and run TreeBank again, it's going to automatically compile our, our source with GF and then re run the linearizations and then automatically compare with the gold standard all in one step. And there we go. Now we actually have a uh, full score 5 on 5 on all of our uh, abstract trees in the TreeBank test. So that was a very quick view of what the GF Eclipse plugin can do. Any questions, please refer to the... Uh, GF Eclipse plugin webpage and any bugs can be reported in the bug tracker. Thank you.